guys, um, this video is all about syllabus statement 3.4.3, which is about explaining the formation of ionic bonds between any metallic and any non-metallic element. Uh, it is a supplementary statement, so if you're just studying core, you do not need to watch this today, and I suggest you go back to video 3.4.2. Otherwise, enjoy. Let's move away from group one and group seven and check out what happens with magnesium oxide. So, what we're going to start with is the electronic configurations of the magnesium and of the oxygen. So this is what these guys look like when you draw out where the electrons are. So magnesium got two in its outer shell, oxygen's got six in its outer shell. Now remember that what these guys are aiming for is they're aiming for that noble gas configuration. They're aiming to have full outer shells. Now, whereas before in the sodium chloride example, I could transfer one electron from my sodium to my chlorine and that solved all the problems, that doesn't solve the problem this time. If I transfer one electron here, magnesium still got one and oxygen's only got seven, so that doesn't solve the problem. The only way that I can solve the problem is by moving both of these electrons in the outer shell of magnesium, both of them into the outer shell of the oxygen. So these electrons come across here, leaving eight on my magnesium, and then a total of eight on the outer shell of my oxygen. So this is what it looks like at the end. You can see that I've done these two in circles just to show that they came from the magnesium. So again, the question is, what holds these together? They've got full outer shells. Why are they bonded together now? Why do they stick together? The reason is, is that they're now ions. So the magnesium lost two electrons. If it's lost two electrons, that means it's lost two negatives, which makes it overall positive. So the magnesium overall has a two plus charge. It lost two negatives. The oxygen gained two negatives, gained two electrons, so it becomes a two minus charge. Now the question is, what holds these two things together? It's the same thing as before. It's that big buzzword, which is electrostatic attraction. That's the thing that holds together the positive and negative oppositely charged ions that you formed as a result of transferring those electrons. Have you spotted the pattern with the charges yet? Here's your periodic table. The rule is simply this. If an element is in group one, it always forms a one plus ion. If it's in group two, it forms a two plus. In group three, it forms a three plus. By contrast, if you go across to group seven, what happens is that they want to gain an electron. So group seven always form one minus. Group six form two minus, and group five form three minus. Let's try a more tricky example. So here, what we've got is magnesium bonding with chlorine. They form a compound called magnesium chloride. Now, what you can see here is that magnesium's got two electrons in its outer shell and chlorine has got seven in its outer shell. If I transfer my electrons across from magnesium to chlorine, they don't balance perfectly. I can't solve all the problems. If I take this one electron and make it here, the chlorine's then happy, it's got its full outer shell, but the magnesium still has one remaining. The way that we solve this problem is that every magnesium bonds with two chlorines. Let's check this out. So what I've done here is I've simplified things a little bit because I've only shown the outer shell electrons, only the outermost ones. The inner ones are still there, but for simplicity, I've just shown the outermost ones today. If I've got two chlorines, that means that I can make all of these elements happy. I can make all of them stable with a full outer shell because one of these electrons here and the magnesium can be transferred to this chlorine here. The other one can be transferred to the other chlorine. If I transfer those electrons there, what I eventually get is something that looks like this. This is your after, this is what happens at the end. So again, you can see I've drawn the dots to show that they came from the magnesium, and magnesium's now got nothing in that outer shell, which means that the one inside must be complete. Magnesium has lost two electrons, so therefore, has to be two plus in charge. It's also in group two, so group two always forms a two plus charge. Chlorine gained one electron, 
so forms a one minus or just a minus charge and this one here also just forms a minus charge. You've got the electrostatic attraction holding the two plus of the magnesium with the negative charge of the chloride. They have to stick together. The way that we write the formula for this is we write it as MgCl2 at the bottom here. And all that means is it means that you need two chlorines for every magnesium, which makes sense because I need two spaces to put those two electrons in to make them all balance out. So MgCl2. If you're feeling super confident with your ionic bonding now, why don't you try aluminium oxide and see if you can predict what happens with the transfer of electrons there.